this Flat Earth Theater review. The more serious the subject matter, the greater the responsibility for the playwright, which perhaps explains why there have been so many mediocre dramas about the Holocaust, for instance. Lindsay Ferentino falls victim to that responsibility with her latest effort, about the aftermath of a school shooting, world premiering at Playwrights Horizons. Despite noble intentions and sensitivity, this flat earth proves an awkwardly written and thoroughly unconvincing drama that squanders the sadly ongoing timeliness of its tragic subject matter. The play revolves around 13 year old best friends Julie, Ella Kennedy Davis, and Xander, Ian St. Germain, survivors of such an event that recently occurred at their New England middle school. Julie, who lives with her single father Dan, Lucas Pepe Elias, has understandably been traumatized by the experience, terrified by every unexpected sound including the classical music recordings played by her elderly upstairs neighbor, Linda Gravitt. As the play begins, her anxieties are stirred once more by the unexpected arrival of Lisa, Cassie Beck, the grieving mother of one of the students killed in the shooting. The play uneasily attempts to infuse light-hearted humor into its serious themes such as Julie and Xander and number 39 semicolon s fumbling stabs at romance and the crotchety demeanor of the neighbor who and number 39 semicolon s declared her apartment a kids free zone. She do s and number 39 semicolon t take kindly to Julie and number 39 semicolon s habit of walking up the fire escape and appearing at her window. It and number 39 semicolon s also revealed that Dan is a former comedian who, Upon his daughter and number 39 semicolon s request, reprises his physical shtick pretending to descend in an escalator and elevator. Class themes are thrown into the mix as well, with a distinct contrast made between the upscale Lisa, whose palatial house, we learn, features a wine cellar, and Dan, who struggles to make a living as a blue-collar worker. He and Julie live in a rundown walk-up apartment and he once bought used clothes for her that Lisa had donated to Goodwill. For long stretches, this flat earth meanders aimlessly in search of something resembling a plot. That would matter less if the dialogue were more incisive, but much of it beggars belief, such as when Julie is shocked to learn that there have been other school shootings besides the one she experienced. Why Don and number 39 semicolon T the grown-ups just fix it? She plaintively asks her father. The playwright attempts to whip up some conflict with a climactic revelation involving Dan and number 39 semicolon s having faked their address in order to get Julie into a better school, ironically the one where the shooting occurred. But the ramification of that deception, as engineered by one of the characters, feels patently false. The evening is a particular disappoint considering the pedigree of the creators. For Antino, a prominent up-and-coming playwright, has garnered much acclaim for such previous efforts as Ugly Lies the Bone and Amy and the Orphans, the latter currently nearing the end of its premiere off-Broadway run. Director Rebecca Tehichman won a Tony Award last season for her superb staging of Paula Vogel and No. 39 semicolon s Indecent, but you and No. 39 semicolon d never discern her talent from her pedestrian work here. The production, which unnecessarily features a live cellist, Christine H. Kim, performing the Bach music supposedly emanating from the neighbor and number 39 semicolon s stereo, has been staged on an awkward two-level set that will likely result in next train for audience members sitting in the first few rows. The performances prove equally unmemorable, with the exception of the always reliable Gravit, who minds her character and number 39 semicolon s comic irascibility for all it and number 39 semicolon s worth. The distinguished stage veteran also provides the evening and number 39 semicolon s most moving moment with her beautifully understated delivery of a lengthy climactic monologue in which her character omnisciently informs Julie about what the future holds for her. Although everything described has yet to happen, it somehow comes across as the most believable passage in the play. Venue, Playwrights Horizons, New York cast, Cassie Beck, Ella Kennedy Davis, Linda Gravitt. Lucas Pepe Elias, Ian St. Germain playwright, Lindsay Ferentino director, Rebecca Tehichman set designer, Dane Laffrey costume designer, Paul Young lighting designer, Christopher A. Curland sound designer, 
Mikhail Fixel presented by Playwrights Horizons.